The new Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 is the sequel to the original Samsung Galaxy Watch, and while there are a lot of really big upgrades that I'll talk about in this video, it also came with a much higher price tag. Now this got me wondering what the differences actually were, and if it was actually worth this increase in price. And after really testing these watches and digging through the specs, I found one really big advantage to the original Galaxy Watch that a lot of people aren't necessarily talking about, and it really could be a deal breaker for potential Galaxy Watch 3 buyers. So this video is a full comparison between the original Samsung Galaxy Watch and the all new Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. Now I wanna start off with the prices first of all, because that is kind of the most important thing to keep in mind here. So the new Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 has a few variations and I'll talk about those in a second, but the price ranges from $400 for the cheapest one up to $480 for the largest one uh, and the LTE version. Now the original Galaxy Watch is two years old now, so it was released in 2018, so the price definitely dropped a bit, but now it's selling for the cheapest version at $220 and the most expensive one up at $300. So even at the cheapest version for both of these, that is a $180 price difference. Now, as far as variants go, they're both kind of the same idea. So there's an LTE and a non-LTE version and the Galaxy Watch 3 is one millimeter smaller coming in at 41 and 45 millimeters while the original Galaxy Watch is 42 and 46 millimeters. Now I'll talk about the aesthetics of these watches in a minute, but as far as colors go, the Watch 3 comes in mystic black, silver, or bronze while the original Galaxy Watch Watch comes in either black, silver, or rose gold. And if you were to hold both of these watches, probably the first thing you would notice would be the difference in weight. So the Galaxy Watch 3 is 14% thinner and 15% lighter, which is kind of something that a lot of people are not talking much about, but it definitely is a really good quality to have, especially for a watch you're considering working out with. And aesthetically, you'll see the lugs are significantly different on these watches. It's just a lot chunkier on the original Galaxy Watch. And I wanna point out that even though the original Galaxy Watch is a lot bigger and chunkier, it does give you a really big advantage that I'll point out later on in this video. Also, the minute marks and the ticks all the way around are much more pronounced on the original Galaxy Watch. Some people like that, some people don't. Personally, I much prefer the aesthetic of the new Galaxy Watch. It's just all around thinner and there's a better screen to body ratio which gets me into the screen as well. The screen is larger on the Galaxy Watch 3, at least for the larger version. So for the 45 slash 46 millimeter version, we have a 1.4 inch screen on the Watch 3 and a 1.3 inch screen on the original watch. So on top of that, I mean, they both have super AMOLED screens. They look really good in broad daylight, but you're gonna have a slightly better screen experience with the Watch 3. Samsung also changed the straps that came with these watches. So the Watch 3 comes with a really nice premium leather strap. Uh, they're both 22 millimeter straps. You can change them very easily as well. But the original watch came with this large rubber strap that I was honestly never really a fan of. I never liked that design. Uh, so, I mean, it's really easy to change it out, but it gives you an idea that originally, I think they were thinking more about workouts. And now that they have the active lineup and the more premium lineup, they kind of differentiate them a little bit. And like the, the active lineup comes with the rubber straps and the premium one comes with the leather straps, it kind of just makes sense. And continuing with the more premium design of the Watch 3, I think not only does the bezel have smaller minute marks that I think is a little bit better of an aesthetic, but the bezel itself, so they both have physical rotating bezels, but on the Watch 3, I think it feels significantly better. So it's more of a defined, more deliberate click when you move it. So on the original watch, I think the bezel was a little bit too easy to spin and the clicks were not really that deliberate. And likewise, the buttons on the Watch 3 are different as well. So they look a lot more like a classic watch, the nice little round buttons on the side that have a, a really standard clicking feeling. It feels really nice. The watch, the original watch had those kind of rubber coated buttons with a slim profile that kind of felt weird if you had to push them a lot. I mean, you get used to it, of course, but I think it just, the aesthetic and the overall experience of the new watch, I think is far improved. Now, if we flip these over, you'll see that the Watch 3 also has a much nicer back and a lot more hardware there as well. So not only does it have the eight heart rate diodes, as you can see in the middle, but it also has ECG and blood pressure measuring capabilities. While on the original watch, as you can see right there, we just have those four heart rate sensing diodes. So guys, to summarize the physical differences between these, the Watch 3 is small smaller, lighter, a more premium feel to it with regards to the button and the bezel, and it has a larger display with a better screen to body ratio. Another really big advantage to the Watch 3 is the massive improvement of the speaker. So let's see if we can test that out right here. Hi Bixby. What's the weather in Clearwater, Florida? In Clearwater, Florida, it is fair and 90 degrees right now. So you can hear how distorted the Galaxy Watch speaker was at max volume. Now let's check out the 3. Hi Bixby. What's the weather in Clearwater, Florida? In Clearwater, Florida, it is fair and 90 degrees right now. That sounded much better to me. 
Getting into more of the software based stuff, they're both running Tizen OS. There is some subtle differences with regards to like the watch faces, for example. It's something that Samsung really likes to do with each iteration of their watch. They bring out new watch faces. Sometimes they roll them back and you can get them on the older versions. But like the Watch 3, for example, has that really nice new weather watch face uh, that shows you like the live weather, kind of an animation behind your time. Uh, and it's going to be updating live with your location. Uh, other than that, getting into the health tracking, the Watch 3 has some pretty significant advantages here as well. So they added the SpO2 sensor. As I pointed out before, there are eight heart rate diodes versus four, uh, so it should be better on the Watch 3 here as well. There's ECG and blood pressure measuring capabilities, although they're not actually out yet. I talked about that in my review of the Galaxy Watch 3. I, I mean, apparently they've been FDA approved according to Samsung, but when that's going to actually show up on the markets, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, they also have fall detection, so if you're older or you live alone, having the Watch 3 could actually literally save your life. So it could be something that you'd really like to have on your device. There's also some more workouts to track, but I, I really wouldn't focus too much on that difference because they both have a ton of workouts. And honestly, uh, while there are some subtle differences with the workouts, I feel like most people don't really care about like their hula hooping workout that much. Uh, you could probably just track it as like an other workout and all you really care about is maybe your heart rate, for example, right? So w when you get into the number of total workouts available, they both essentially have like, they have the basics that you're really going to be looking for. You do have some new analytics with the Watch 3 though, and they were talking a lot about these in the Samsung Unpacked event. So for example, you have things about like your balance and your running, uh, like your balance, if you're running too heavy on one foot or the other. And uh, as I mentioned before, you also have the SpO2 tracking as well. So as far as health tracking goes, this is actually really easy. The Watch 3 is significantly better than the original watch. Although, like I mentioned in my previous reviews, I highly recommend getting a non-leather strap if you plan on working out with this, uh, just because not only is it going to hold up better in like a swim workout, for example, but it also will have a little more elasticity to hold the diodes better on your wrist to make sure you actually get uh, a better reading for your heart rate. Because having such a large area with eight heart rate diodes means that you definitely need to keep it on your wrist as well as possible. Samsung also changed their presentation quite a bit. So they went from like a classic little box like this to just a long rectangular box. And in there was almost nothing, just the watch and this wire, which is your charging wire. And they both charge essentially the same way. They both like, you can charge them on the back of your phone if you want, uh, and the chargers work interchangeably. But you know, you just get this one little wire while the original Galaxy Watch came with this nice little stand that you can put the watch in when you're charging it and it charges like that upright and shows you the time. And they also came with uh, obviously a micro USB cable to plug into that and a charging block for your wall, which I don't think many people really care about these days anyway. Getting into the internal components of these watches, the Galaxy Watch Original has one really big advantage like I was talking about before. Even though it's larger and chunkier, it does give you a lot more room for a bigger battery on board. And so looking at the 46 millimeter version here, the battery on board is almost 50% larger than that of the Galaxy Watch 3. So we have a 472 milliamp hour battery on the Galaxy Watch Original and the Galaxy Watch 3 only has 340 milliamp hours. So what that translates to is between like a one and a half to two and a half day battery on the Watch 3 to like a three to four day battery on the original Galaxy Watch. So for a lot of people that could really be a deal breaker right there, having the cheaper watch and the longer battery life. I mean, the original Galaxy Watch, that's kind of hard to argue with right there. And I know right now you might be thinking, all right, Mike, the Galaxy Watch 3 is a smaller battery, but does it have a better chipset? Maybe that's more efficient. Actually, not really. It has exactly the same chipset as the original Galaxy Watch, which was kind of surprising to find out. But other than that, the specs on the Galaxy Watch 3 internally are significantly better. So it does have more storage. It has eight gigabytes versus four gigabytes, which means you can save a lot more offline music if you're gonna run or go for a bike ride. Uh, on top of that, it has one gigabyte of RAM compared to like three quarters of a gigabyte uh, on the original Galaxy Watch and it has Bluetooth 5.0 versus 4.2 for a better connectivity. So guys, that was a lot to talk about there. There's definitely a lot of differences between these watches, but which one's actually the right watch to buy for you? So to really summarize it, the Galaxy Watch 3 is smaller, it's lighter, it feels more premium, it comes with a nice leather strap, has better health tracking, has better, has more RAM and more storage, and better Bluetooth as well. 
but the original Galaxy Watch still gives you the rotating bezel, the same operating system, the same chipset, a larger battery, and it's $180 cheaper. So it comes down to this. If you're looking for something, if you're just looking for a watch and you want the rotating bezel and you're on a budget, I would definitely go with the original Galaxy Watch. I think that's kind of a no-brainer. You're getting a lot of the same experience here. But if you're on a budget and you don't necessarily need the rotating bezel, I would highly recommend looking at the Galaxy Watch Active 2, being that it's only maybe $40 more expensive than the original Galaxy Watch, and it does a lot more that we're seeing on the Galaxy Watch 3. But of course, if you are not on a tight budget and you just want the best device, the Galaxy Watch 3, I think, is a no-brainer. It's definitely a lot more future-proof. It's definitely an all-around better design and a better product. But comment down below, guys. Let me know what you guys think between these two devices. Which one's better? Is it worth the extra money to buy the Galaxy Watch 3? Or do you want to save $180 and go with the model from 2018 that still does a lot of the same stuff? All right, so that's everything I have to say about these two devices. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.